Hi, I'm Sean Luz from Journeys Worldwide. Today we're going to be talking to Nikki Fitzgerald from Angama Mara. Angama Mara is a premier safari property based on the rim of the Great Rift Valley on the edge of the Maasai Mara in Kenya. Nikki has been traveling quite a bit recently across the borders post COVID pandemic, and she'll be able to enlighten us as to what it's like and how safe it is. She'll also be able to tell us a little bit about the migration that happens here every year when millions of wildebeest and zebra pass through this area. The other nostalgic and romantic side of the area is was the setting for the movie Out of Africa. Corin Blixen, who wrote the novel, passed through this area many times.
Hi, Nikki. Thanks for joining us. Very early in the morning for you. Um, and it's great to be able to see you again. Good morning, Sean. Lovely to be chatting to you too. Always grab the opportunity to chat about Africa, safaris, Kenya, regardless of the, the time of day. So thank you very much for, for, for hosting me on this. Not a problem. I mean, you've got such a beautiful property there, as we've just seen from your video. And um, just an amazing location as well. You're right up on the edge of the, the rim of the Great Rift Valley. And um, you must have been very, very lucky to have got that spot. It was uh, a dose of luck and probably more perseverance. Um, Steve uh, uh, nagged the landlords for that piece of land for a good 15 years. And I think they they finally just, to get rid of him, they, they said, okay, it's yours. So it was it was a long journey to get there but it was worth every every minute fantastic oh that's great um nikki you've been traveling back and forwards a little bit uh, post the pandemic uh, can you tell us a little bit about what it's like crossing the borders uh in africa now that COVID is kind of over there sean i've been to kenya three times in the last two months the first time south africa was still locked down so that was a, a different kind of trip but the last two trips South Africa's open, and as you well know, Kenya had opened their borders on the 1st of August to international travelers. And what I really admire about um, Kenyatta and, and his government and how they've handled this pandemic, they've been pretty strict, but very clear in their thinking and in their messaging. When they said they were opening their borders, they opened the borders and everything was in place. All anybody needs to get into Kenya now is a, is a, COVID, a negative a COVID certificate. 72 hours before travel um, and then of course most countries require it to when you leave most airlines too to have a test to go out again so getting in into kenya is as simple as, as a COVID test the airlines is a bit different flying these days um, you've got kenya airways all the the cabin attendants are in full ppe guests are required passengers are required to, to wear masks which is which is no big deal um, and on the other side, there is a couple of uh, forms to fill in, uh, the endless temperature check, and, and away you go. No quarantining inside of Kenya uh, of any kind or, or tracing or tracking or anything. They just keep a, keep a tab of what seat number you are in and, and your contact details in Kenya should anybody present symptoms on the plane. Other than that, it's, it's really quite simple. Um, getting around Kenya internally on the on the, on the internal flights again all that is required is a mask kenyans are pretty disciplined people as you know they're part of the old british empire and they like things to be done right and uh, everybody everybody's wearing masks um whether regardless of where you in all the hotels um in the airports and but you know kenyans smile with their eyes so it's it's good but you eventually you kind of don't even see the masks anymore i think they're becoming a way of life so other than that, it's it's safari as usual. Well, that's fantastic. And so the general processes and everything in, is in place and you, you feel quite safe that they handling the cleanliness and everything. That's all good. Oh, yeah. yeah again, as I said, Kenyans are very particular. So we've got some rather strange things, requirements from the government, like a, a hand washing situation as you arrive at the lodge. Um, which of course we do. It doesn't look so great, but it's there. But very good. And 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 I think for my colleagues, I've travelled to quite a few lodges as well in the last three months. Well, three trips. All my colleagues in the industry um, are taking it, taking it very seriously. There's nobody who's sort of being cavalier about about the protocols, the cleanliness, the cleaning down, um, the washing of hands. And social distancing, it's all, you know, you can see tables have been moved, spread apart a little bit. Um, I, in one lodge, I was at Surakoi a couple of nights ago. They taken off all the magazines and books in the rooms because of a possible COVID transmission from that. So people are being, being serious but calm and really focusing on welcoming guests back to Kenya and back to Africa and, and making them feel um, a little bit like they can breathe again without that always looking over your shoulders you do possibly do if you come from a big city like Johannesburg or New York or, or London. Um, it's, I think guests are feeling a sense of <sighs> life as usual out here. And we're working hard at, everybody in Kenya is working hard at giving that message. Well, that's fantastic. And I mean, Africans have always been incredibly warm and welcoming. And I think they must have been missing it a lot. Um, how has the community been coping? 
I'm happy to say that in, in Maasai land, we've had very little COVID. It's been more in, in the cities of Mombasa and, and Nairobi. So the, the, that's been um, that's been okay. But obviously, an impact uh, economically has been catastrophic. Many lodges, unfortunately, had to send their staff home on, on um, indefinite unpaid leave. And that was really tough. And with that goes health insurance and all those benefits that people rely on. Because we were closed, Kenya was closed for four months. And it's a heavy lift for an operator to, to, to find the wherewithal, especially through a high season, which is, as you know, it's our harvest season in Kenya, um, to support the payroll. So it's been, it's been pretty tough. But Kenyans are great farmers. So many of the people went back home to their farms, their plots of lands, farmed and, um, and just hunkered down. I was happy to say I was. I managed to keep all my stuff on on the payroll. That is important for me. Oh, that's um, very, and, that's amazing. Yeah, I've got very supportive shareholders. So I <laughs> I thank them. Every day. I thank them every day, because you know, I think you'll agree with me, Sean. You know, there's the old adage: people come to to Africa for the animals, but they certainly return for the people. And the people of, of Kenya, in particular, are, are the warmest people, and they really make you feel so welcome. And nothing is too much trouble, and it's, it's never forced. I think it comes it comes through mother's milk. I don't know where this sense of hospitality comes from, but it's it's a it's a beautiful thing. And I think right now, um, not only being out in, in 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 the wilderness and in the beauty and the animals, but the warmth of the Kenyan people is a, it's it's a tonic to to those guests who have been you know, trapped away in their homes wherever they are in the world. And we've had guests from from pretty reopened. I wish I could say they were pouring in through the door. They're absolutely not. It's more of a dribble than a pour. But um they're coming and and they're giving um they're giving us much joy. And we're most grateful for people who are traveling because it's you know, people have got to get on a long haul flight and and they don't really know what's waiting for the other end. But thankfully, when they get there, they say, wow, that was much easier than we thought it was going to be. We thought it was going to be a much tougher lift to get to get to Africa, but we're so glad we came. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, that's that's great news. Now, um, let's go specifically to Angama Mara. And can you tell us a bit about like the migration? I think that's one of the main reasons people do come out there. And it's certainly just about everybody in the world knows about the migration and the Mara Game Reserve. Yeah, it's a it's a the, the migration is a double edged sword, Sean. It is three months of the year. It is chaotic. Time, isn't it? Crazy. Animal is there. Two about two million animals come into the Mara from the Serengeti, and it's, it's just chaos, carnage, and a photographer's delight. Having said that, um, I do want to stress that the Mara and many other and the Serengeti and all those parts of that greater ecosystem. It's a great 12 month destination. So yes, Absolutely. the migration is fantastic and you will see something you've never ever seen um, before or again. So it is a once in a lifetime, but I'm finding that guests are coming back outside of, 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 the, of, the, of the migration season because the Mara just is such a beautiful place as is, as you know, the Serengeti. And when you've got it pretty much to yourself in, 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 in the quieter seasons, it is just miraculous. But this year we had a, Rather annoyingly, we had a really good migration season for, with with no guests. So the animals, <laughs> I had guests, I had guests with crossings with only two or three other vehicles. I said, "Well, enjoy it. It's not going to happen again." It's, it's a little a bit like seeing the yes. Yeah, it's a little and bit like leaving the Bernalu well, these all have by yourself. With... Water. You've got permanent water there, which exactly. means that the animals are there year round, which is really important, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, we've just recorded our wettest year since um, we've been at, at Angama, okay. which is um, six years. We, we're quite close, as you know, to Lake Victoria. Yes. And those um, rain clouds roll in from behind us and dump, especially where we are in the Mara Triangle, and dump down late afternoon in those beautiful, dramatic thunder showers. Yeah, and that's, in fact, another... <laughs> beautiful. It's another, um, you know, in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the rainy season, and I must just stress... Um, I live in Johannesburg and we get those late afternoon dumps and that's exactly what happens in the Mara. This is not Seattle rain that, that goes on for forever in a day. It comes down in, in, in thunderstorms and then, of course, you know what the light is like after that. The rainbows come out, so the sun starts. Yes. It is, yeah. 
So, so weather watching is almost as exciting as, as game watching in Amara, especially from where we are up on, on the edge of the Rift Valley. And, the light and if you're not watching, beautiful. It's it looks like a stage set below you because there's a cloud, as the sun breaks through a hole in the clouds, there's a spotlight on one part of the Mara. It's exquisite. Um, so yeah, we've had a, it's, it's, the migration is great. And I, and I would urge people who are coming to see the migration to always give one day to go and sit at the river and, and, and wait for those crossings. And if, if you're more than lucky, you'll, you'll get a crossing or two or three. Um, but then also break away from the river and go to the quieter parts of the, of the, of the Mara and just sit amongst the mega herds as they're, 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 they're browsing and feeding and, you know, making that special wildebeest noise that they make. I'm not going to do it now because I'll make a fool of myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. And just sit there quietly. Because when you're sitting in your vehicle and you're surrounded by 10,000 animals, it's it's an extraordinary, it's, an it's, an extraordinary mm, it's beautiful. I'm, I've been banned from crossings because I cry and I wail and I <laughs> scream. And, I, and I'm, I just, I just miss behave most awfully because it's, it, it's, it's incredible. Um, if you like seeing babies eaten by crocodiles, which I don't, but, uh, we had a crossing this year, my guides reported, of over 10,000 animals at one crossing wow. point. I mean, that's just phenomenal. In, yeah, and the dust and the water. And of course, it's not only the crocodiles, but as, as those animals, you know, they've run the gambit of the crocodiles, they come out the other side and the land's all waiting for them. <laughs> they really don't have a job. It's not one thing, it's, it's another. quite a gauntlet, so, isn't it? Shame. Yeah, it is. It is indeed. So uh, hey, it was a great animals... crossing. So at other times of the year, what else are you going to be seeing there? What are your, some of your specials that you have? I think in the Mara is known for, um, firstly, open grass plains. So it's, I'd like to call it Chanel game viewing. At my age, you know, you don't want to add to wrinkles. So you don't like screwing <laughs> up your eyes. I think you're from, are you, you're from, you're from Zimbabwe, Sean. I am originally. Are, yes. are you? Yeah. Originally? Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're a Bushveld person and uh, so am I, but you know, this is endless peering through thick acacia looking for something. Well, in the Mara, you just plonk yourself down, put your binoculars to your eyes, and boom, it's all there. Uh, I think probably one of the loveliest things to see on these open grass plains are the great herds of elephants, families of elephants, um, as, they, as they come down from the Rift Valley in the early morning and they meander across the plains. That's a beautiful sight. Huge herds of buffalo. Um, in the Mara, at the last, in the Mara Triangle, um, where we operate, I think at the last count we had... 56 um, male lions in their prime. So wow, if you can that's, imagine- That's a huge <laughs> concentration of male lions. It is. And and there's endless drama. I mean, they cross the river back and forth, they go into the Serengeti back and forth, but we have fantastic um, lion viewing. We have currently in the Mara, and they're just on the other side of the river. So our guests need to to cross over at Mara Bridge. We've got that well-known uh, coalition of five um, cheetah, cheetah. I don't know if you've been following them, See, but five male cheetahs, yeah, in, they are, they're incredible. And they've been delighting um, photographers and guests for the last, I think, two or three years. Um, they, they, yeah. And um, so probably the, the only animal we work, we work hard for would be leopard. I would say probably 50% of our guests see leopard. So it's not, so not so be sand it's leopard, not that, but they're not that much. That's, that's still quite a lot yeah. of leopard because sometimes you'll go on safari and not see a leopard at all. So yeah. Um, and that's with so, traveling to different areas where they are known to be. Yeah. And just to break away from the Mara, um, because I know that you'd like to know a little bit more about what else is in Kenya, I've just spent quite a bit of time in, on the Lakipe Plateau and seeing those endemics in northern Kenya. It's such a delight to see, you know, those, the gravy zebra, the reticulated giraffe, the Jeranook. Um, that's, that's, so that's why, you know, Kenya is such a lovely destination because you've got the Kind of the well-known big animals in the Mara, and then if you go up to up to the north, you've got the endemics up there, and of course different different landscapes and different it's habitats. A very different landscape, isn't it? And and of course with that as well, there's the different people, um, a lot of different tribes up that side. Yeah, the Samburu, and I've discovered in my in my journeys because it's been, as I said, quite a bit of time there looking at at some opportunities. Um, there's a Lakipia Maasai, so they are the ones mostly working. Um, in the lodge, and, and the Samburu are more going up towards in, in Samburu land up to um, now I forget the name of the reserve. I'm completely where is it? It's gone. It'll come to me now. <laughs> um, but very, but whether it's Maasai or like uh, or Samburu, very dramatic for for, for international guests. Uh, exciting um, to meet to meet 
people like that. And what's lovely about, about Kenyans and all Africans is they love sharing the, the stories of their culture and their history and their heritage and and their everyday lives and you know what they what they aspire to and what they dream about and it was quite a lovely story. The other day, a, a, a guest asked one of um, the butlers at Angama, who's Masai James Sidera. Um, they were chatting. He was chatting to him. He said, "Well, how many children have you got?" He said, "I have ten children and two wives." And um, the the guest said, "Oh, that's interesting. And and are your children looking after your cows?" He said, no, my children are at school. I pay for somebody to look after my cows. Well, wow. so, that's quite different. So then, <laughs> yeah, but so there's the there's the, the the shift, and I think that's so interesting for international guests to to understand that this is not See how um, you know changing. people who don't, yeah they're changing, but they but while they're changing, they're proudly holding on to all their their great traditions and 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 culture and okay. and the storytelling. That's what we we're known for in Africa is, is storytelling. We love to tell a good story. Absolutely. <laughs> and talking of good stories, out of Africa, um, you uh, you have the scene for out of Africa. You've got the book behind you, and uh, it's certainly most of us know the the story, the the novel, and the movie. And um, can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, it was it was you know when you 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 look for a site, you think all about okay the location and access and and access to, to, to the game reserve. Um, and we discovered to our delight that the the Ngong Hills in the book and the movie, you know, I had a farm in Africa at the foot of the Ngong Hills. Well, when the location scouts came to Africa, probably in the early 80s, looking for a, a good, you know, where, where to film these Ngong Hills, um, Nairobi had already just you know, spread all the way to the foot of the Ngong Hills. So you couldn't very well have um, Robert Redford and Meryl Streep sitting overlooking sort of Nairobi urban sprawl. So the hills on which the um, Angama is built um, were the hills that they used, well, it was a long time ago, obviously, before you were there, are the, were the hills that they used for, for the movie. So if you're a lover of the movie and um, you will immediately get a sense of, oh, I, I've been here before, we, we, you know, what does it feel like? We, we're quite low key about it. Um, there's no sort of cutouts of Robert that you know you can sit next to and have a picture taken. But certainly um, there are enough touch points in and around the lodge that um, if people do love the movie and and certainly my generation they absolutely love it, we can put them in that spot um, where Meredith and Robert you know sat for the poster and they can have the picture taken and we um, Robert Redford's grave is just outside the safari shop. Everybody's horrified, but you know Robert Redford's not dead, and of course he's not dead. But um, <laughs> you know, in the movie, <laughs> in the movie where Meryl Streep stands under that beautiful moss tree and delivers that heartbreaking um, eulogy, that is that's right there. Uh, Robert Redford, <laughs> Robert actually, Dennis Finch Hatton is actually buried in the Ngong Hills, and that, Sean, is a, a really interesting um, visit for anybody in Nairobi. I know in Nairobi you often go to the Giraffe Centre and the Daphne Sheldrick Element Orphanage, yes. wonderful yeah. places. For the lovers of the movie, it would also be fun to go to um, up to Finch Hatton's grave, and then sort of the third part of that would be to to go to Segera in 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 Lake Kipiep, where the aeroplane is from the from the movie. Obviously, Rick, oh, okay, that's lovely. Uh, yeah, no, no, very much so, and um, affectionately known as Gami, that's her call sign, G A G A M Y. Um, she's parked in a beautiful hangar at Segera, and you can just go and hang out with her and kiss her on her nose. If you want to fly in Gami, I think it's $50,000 or something, quite something. I, I would do it in a heartbeat, wow. but um, $50,000. <laughs> that is quite something, and, but uh, I guess, they, are there people well, who they, do that? They, they do for yeah, they do it for charity. Um, and they've got to bring, bring the guy who looks after the plane from England. And so it's it's done for one of the, the Zatz Foundation. So it's not just, um, you know, making money. It's, uh, okay. it's you. It's, and she's a, Beautiful, beautiful airplane. I think it must be exactly the same make as the one that um, uh, Finch Hatton crashed at Boy. So um, right. it's okay. yeah, there's some nice t and of course the Karim Blixen Museum in Nairobi. That's also a, a great a great place to visit. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's great. I mean, Angama Mara is just so beautiful and romantic, and just the, the beautiful scenery and the 180 degree views from each uh, tent. It's, it's it is just beautiful there. and then. Of course, the romance of out of Africa as well. Um, so, Nikki, we're, we're yeah. kind of coming to an end, but to tell us a little bit. Uh, you, you can also do like hot, walk, um, sorry, hot air balloons and so on there. 
yep, we've got two operators quite close to us down down the, the, the rift and into onto the Morrow floor. Um, it's about a 40 minute drive to each one. And that's really beautiful to, <clears throat> first thing in the morning to, you know, before dawn, they fill the balloons, they fill them with air, and that's exciting. And then you lift off and you do an, an hour, an hour 10, so either over the plains and if the migration is below, even more exciting. Um, but, the, the, you know, the balloon pilots can see something, they'll come down, always respecting respecting the animals, so that's fun. Walking is another great um, uh, attraction for our guests, walking along the edge of the Rift Valley with the Maasai naturalists. We have a little fun program called Run with the Kenyan. Um, and it, when, so I guess you can imagine for runners, I'm certainly not a runner, but I know that for guests who, people who love to run, to run with the Kenya is like a, a bit of a bucket list item. And um, so we, well we go running. they well-known runners and to be able to run with them. And, <laughs> yes, and especially the Maasai and, who just seem to cover ground effortlessly. They do, they float and lope. And I've had to tell my master staff, please don't run backwards and chat to the guests at the same time, because that's bad manners. Just keep running running alongside them. And then when the guests <laughs> have, have done it right, we present, we present them with a t-shirt that says, I ran with the Kenyan and in brackets and, and survived. So just little fun things like that. We have a photographic studio at the lodge, which is um, the guests absolutely love. So they spend hours in the photographic studio with, with Adam and, and, and Mukali. Um, editing their pictures, learning how to use their cameras, um, all of that. We've got a beautiful shamba, which is the Swahili word for vegetable garden. And our guests, can you imagine, we charge our guests a fortune and then we make them pick their own lunch and wash yeah. it and, and dress it and, and eat it themselves. So there's, there's fun stuff. And, and, I think people and love doing that, don't they? They do. They absolutely love it. You, know, it, you put a, a concrete pole in the ground in Kenya and it, it blossoms the next day. So um, <laughs> if the elephants and, and all those other creatures don't get to it first, there's always some delicious um, fresh produce for the guests. And Sean, we, I'm not allowed to say this because the, nobody's, nobody's watching, so I can. Um, in November, yeah, I get very, I get very strictly monitored by the, by the marketing team. In November, we will be opening um, uh, our map room which is, I'm sure you've been following the trend in Africa of discovery rooms and curiosity rooms and sort of museums. Have you seen that? Some, there's some really beautiful ones around. So we thought, okay, what, what's Angama's interpretation of that? And we built a very handsome map room with about 150 maps. And as you know, travelers love map room and they'll just lose themselves in, in all these wonderful maps. The, Earliest map of Africa is 1603, not an original, but 1603, all the way, all the way up to, um, you know, the hominid sites, you know, where all those early man sites are in Africa and how the Rift Valley works and all of that. So we're excited about that. So always, oh, that sounds no, exciting. That's fantastic. I know I'm certainly going to spend a lot of time there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. Yeah. So that's, yeah. And then we have our new Angama Safari Camp. So I think for the most important message is, is yes, it's COVID, but it does give you a chance to to regroup, think out of the box. What can we do to to delight our guests when they get back, and and certainly um, hold strong onto the belief that travel to Africa is is something I think becoming almost more important now than ever. Just to fall in love with the world again. We're all a bit cross with the world, but you can't be cross when you're on safari. Absolutely. Yeah, well, that's great. Thank you, Nikki. I really appreciate your time. And uh, let's hope it all starts coming forward again. And I'm certainly looking forward to getting back and coming up to visit you again. Please do, Sean. We'll be waiting with arms open wide to welcome you back to Africa. Great. Thank you, Nikki.
moving talking to Nikki Fitzgerald from Angama Mare in Kenya. It's great to hear that things are looking really positive across there, and I'm sure international travel will be just as easy or probably easier than it was for Robert Redford and Meryl Streep in Out of Africa. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next time.